you could buy one fully automatic electronic flywheel foam dart blaster that did everything. You could play with the kids at about 115 feet per second. You could play with the pros at about 165 feet per second. And you could crush the opposition at about 215 feet per second. With a powerful LiPo battery with the charger built into the blaster that you can just charge via USB-C. It uses the same mags that everybody else is using and it uses the same darts that everybody else is using. All of this for an MSRP of under $100. <laughs> Meet the Siren Blink. I finally get to talk about this thing. Seriously, this thing is an actual menace. Biggest and best in the entirety of the Siren line, but is also, in my opinion, one of the best values you can get in the entirety of foam flinging. This one blaster does it all and does it better than the rest at a price that can't be beaten. And unfortunately, this is a sponsored video and I really wish it wasn't, but MSI has paid me to show you this blaster and tell you why I love it. They approved this video, but everything I'm saying right now is entirely my own opinion. But the TLDR with the Siren Blink is that this is a LiPo powered USB-C rechargeable flywheel full auto mag fed blaster that gives you the ability to dial up and down both the velocity of the darts coming out of the muzzle and the rate of fire of the full auto system. And this isn't a little dinky proprietary pack either. You can shove your own 3S LiPo in this thing if you want to, and it still charges via USB-C because the Siren Blink has a full on LiPo balance charger inside the blaster. And right on the box, it says it fires up to 190 feet. Take that off. And if this isn't tactical enough for you, just grab a can of matte black spray paint and glue a buffer tube on it, I don't know. Opening up a Siren Blaster is an experience in itself because it's packaged unlike anything I've ever seen before. And the all important money shot. It, it's there. Here's our darts. These are different darts and we'll talk about that in a second. If you watched my previous video, you probably know why. But we've got the blaster itself, our 3S 11.1 volt, 1000 milliamp hour LiPo battery. That's lithium polymer, our 20 round magazine, our USB-C recharging cable, instruction guide, and our Siren branded safety glasses. Now, of course the Blink is compatible with most foam dart half length magazines and almost all half length foam darts. But one of Siren's biggest claims to fame were their e PP Siren darts, which I'm a huge fan of, but they do have one problem when they're squeezed between this absurdly high crush flywheel cage, and that's that it crushes the darts too. And believe me, I talked to the designer. They spent so much time and effort, and that's one of the reasons why this video took so long to come out, to make these kinds of darts work with this blaster. But for the sake of everybody else out there, they have their own Siren branded, just typical half length foam darts. We'll just bust out the scale here and let's make sure this thing is zeroed out and make sure it works with our muffin here, our official test muffin. 119 grams, I knew Costco made their muffins dense. Typically your foam darts like the ones that come with like the Adventure Force Pro Blasters and the Dart Zone Max Blasters are 0.95 grams to one grams. Better darts are about 1.15 to 1.2 gram. What does a siren dart weigh in at? And it is. 1.19 gram, let's test another one. Looks like they went with the heavier weight darts. 1.18, 1.19, all right, we're in business. These are heavier weight darts than what you typically get. That does mean you might get a little bit lower velocity, but you will get way better stability in flight. I know a lot of people are gonna have problems with this design, I tell you, give it a little bit, because if you're expecting something super tactical or anything, like this is not gonna do it. It's a very safe design. The ergonomics on this for me are fantastic, but a lot of people expect this to be a stock or so. It's not a stock. However, this is the entire battery tray and it is held on by a single screw. And inside that, you've got an XT60 LiPo connector and you've got your balance charger port. Put our LiPo in there, we can connect it to the balance plug and then put in our XT60 lead and our blaster is now powered. And theoretically, you don't ever have to take that battery back out. The velocity knob is also your power knob. So all the way to the left, it will click and that means it's off. Turn it to the right, it will click and now it's on. And as you can see, when I press the rev trigger, it revs up and all the way at max, 
You've got a jam clearing door right there. And the speed dial is how fast your rate of fire goes. So this can go to pretty much nothing to all the way up to about seven darts per second, a little over six. Which might not seem like the fastest blaster out there, but for a primary style blaster or one that I really, really want to do a wield right now. That's fast enough. These magazines, this is a huge long mag. It only holds 20 darts, so at six darts a second, this mag will barely last longer than three seconds. You've also got a rear sight here, which just friction fits, clips into that spot right there. And then this little picket to me piece that goes on the front, which works pretty darn good. And more importantly, you've got your USB-C recharging port right here, which you have to turn the blaster off and you have to fully charge the thing, which I want to remind you, this battery right now has not been charged yet. So make sure you do that first, but for the sake of this video, I'm not going to. And yeah, any USB-C charging port will work for that. You can use a portable battery bank. You can use a wall ward. You can use pretty much anything. And that eliminates 90% of the scary things about lithium polymer batteries. You'll get a lot of playoff of one battery if it ever gets low just charge it back up and lithium polymer gives you those faster rev up times and more torque on those motors so they don't get bogged down with that full auto rate of fire magazine goes into the magazine well and there is a button right in front of the firing trigger that is your mag release and yes you can freely drop mags out of it the grip is very standard there's nothing special there but i find it comfortable even if i kind of choke up my hand a little bit there's still plenty of room on there and this spot is pretty large for your thumb if you don't like thumb hole grips though you're not gonna like this one and yeah extra point of contact right there you could theoretically shoulder this like squish up on it if you wanted to it's not meant for it starting at the highest rate of fire <laughs> But of course, we can turn that down to pretty much nothing and even turn the rate of fire down to basically semi-auto. Works perfectly fine. Even if you want to single shot it, yeah incredibly easy. So you don't have to buy multiple different blasters to hit multiple different velocity points. If you want to play with the kids, turn the thing all the way down. You want to play with the grown-ups, turn it all the way up and make them wish they hadn't stood in front of you. And it goes without saying, this thing is stupidly, I just dented the crap out of it, really, really well built. There is zero flex. It is a very thick shell and it feels incredibly good to hold. Oh, why did I do that? The things I do for YouTube. But of course, this is a Siren Blaster, and if there's anything Siren Blasters have done, it's perform. And the performance of the Bling doesn't so much as surpass everything else we know, it downright disrespects them. Loading up the Blink with its included Siren Darts, which again are about 1.2 gram at the highest power setting. We were chronographing well into 180 feet per second, almost 190 feet per second. And when Nerf's new average with the N1 Dart is like 85, 90 maybe? Yeah, that's a lot. But even comparing it to the Nerf Pro Sender, which tops out at about 145, 150 maybe on a good day. Yeah, the Blink smashes that. Not only can it do that velocity, because of course you can tune it up and down using the power knob. <laughs> I'll never get tired of saying power knob. But it does all that with full auto and a rechargeable battery. Swapping over to lighter Adventure Force Pro Darts, we did get a nominal bump in performance here. And of course, there's too many data points here with the analog knob to kind of do like, oh, here's it at half power and stuff like that. But there were two things I wanted to find out. One, what is the absolute lowest I can get this thing hitting? And using the included siren darts, which again are a bit heavier on basically the absolute lowest performance setting I could get, basically just turning the blaster on, I was able to get comfortably under 120 feet per second with the highest shot being 128. That means this thing is HVZ legal. And it's in a Californian compliant design. It's very friendly and human. But I also wanted to see what the absolute highest I could get out of this thing. And you're right, we're gonna cheat. These little guys weigh in at about 0.8 grams. So quite a bit under the Adventure Force Pro or the ones that came with the Siren Blink. And there we go, smashing 200 feet per second, actually 210 feet per second with nearly every single shot. And these things scream. And even as you watch me annihilate these two targets, that was first shot accuracy. The thing is reasonably accurate for what it is. And that stability and power does translate outside, shooting these things at the longest sight range I have. With flat shots, I was able to hit consistently over 100 feet. We had no whirly birds, no nothing crazy. Darts just went pretty straight. Sometimes they went a little bit too left and right, but most of the time they were straight down the range. 
And this is a very difficult thing to show on camera because now we're talking about some of the most extreme ranges, but with a slight angle or pretty decent angle, I would say not maximum, I was able to clear the range. I was able to get foam darts to go from the 100 foot line, which is at the edge of the concrete where that line is painted, to the gate, which is about 150 feet. And there was a dart that went beyond that. A lot of my shots actually wound up hitting the tree branch, which I can't really control, but their 190 foot range claims aren't a joke. I actually believe, especially with lighter weight darts, and you know, a little bit of tailwind and stuff like that, but everybody exaggerates range claims. What is impressive is that the siren blink nearly matches them out of the box. And that means that the blink delivers on pretty much every single front. I have very minor nitpicks about this blaster, and that's just, I wish you had a little bit more control over the trigger. It is not impossible to get good with this trigger and do consistent single shots on it. But when you turn down the speed, you turn down the reaction time, which does make it easier for you to fire single shots at the cost of a small delay. If you have it all the way maxed out, the trigger delay is non-existent, but you tend to fire two shots with a short trigger burst, which honestly, that's fine. It's a flywheeler, more darts down range. You do go through your magazine a little bit faster, but you have a higher chance of hitting your target the first time. And that's it. I like the ergonomics of the Blink a lot, especially since it's so different than anything else I have. It's a very friendly design, so I don't have to worry about packing this in a bag and being told I can't use it because it looks too realistic or anything like that. And that's definitely what NSI was going for when they chose this design. But it feels good in the hands. It looks like something straight out of S4 League, which I'm a huge fan of. It hits hard. It's one of the most accurate out of the box flywheelers I've ever gotten my hands on. And you can turn it all the way down to about 115 feet per second or all the way up to about 215 feet per second, which means besides stock, this blaster covers just about everything. And for the $100 value, and that's MSRP, by the way, that's not even on a discount. Chances are you'll never need another flywheeler ever again. I have brushless flywheelers wheelers that are less capable than what this thing can do. The Blink isn't going to be the blaster for everyone, but it is the design for anyone. And even if you want to really nitpick, like you have a hard FPS cap at like 150 or something like that, and you're worried about somebody messing with the knobs to get more power after they chrono it in and cheating, at just cover it in duct tape or something. Then you have a tournament lock and it's good to go. But the biggest boon is for casual players, people who aren't super into foam flinging yet, but want a high powered competitive option out of the box. I mean, it doesn't get any easier. You just plug the lipo in when it's low, you charge it and you use the same mags everybody else is using. And also you hit ridiculously hard. Like seriously, 210 plus feet per second. Are you joking from a flywheeler? There was a point not too long ago where that wasn't even feasibly possible. And better yet, this is Siren's first swing at this kind of design. Their first flywheeler blows Nerf Pro completely out of the water and Nerf Pro has had two shots at it already. The Siren Blink is the new standard for foam dart flywheel flingers going forward. If you don't have the bare minimum of these features and this performance out of the box, you might as well not even try. My only problem is now I need to have a second one. This thing is so wanna dual wield it isn't even freaking funny. Just look at it, it's perfect for it.